This is a problem involving curvilinear motion and we're going to look at it uh, with a couple of different coordinate systems, both uh, rectangular XY coordinates and with uh, normal and tangential. So the problem statement is um, very similar to some of the problems you've seen in the textbook. Uh, we're told that the particle is following a path that's uh, defined here by the uh, a function y as, as a function of, uh, of x and we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. Um, we're also told that the particle's speed in the x direction is constant at 2 inches a second. It starts at the origin uh, at time equals 0 and what we're supposed to do is after the particle has moved 4 inches in the x direction, so 4 inches to the right, we want to find the velocity and the acceleration. So let's take a look uh, visualizing this problem. So this is at the starting position. Uh, the origin is um, where the a particle is right now. The particle is uh, represented by the pin that's constrained to uh, stay within the slot that's vertical as well as the slot that's defined by the uh, path equations. And you notice this uh, path is a half sine wave and uh, the 3 is the um, height of this. In other words from 0 it'll go up to a height of 3 inches and uh, the x over 12 shows that um, when we're all the way at the other end of the slot, we'll have moved 12 inches in the x direction. And this marker just shows where the x equal 4 inch mark is. And of course, that's where we were uh, supposed to find the velocity and the acceleration when we're at uh, that position. So let's take a look uh, at a SolidWorks animation of the motion here. And so you can see that the carriage is moving from left to right at a constant speed of uh, 2 inches per second and so the particle, which again is the red pin, is going to have that x component movement but it's also going to have uh, vertical movement or movement in the y direction as it follows the path. And so that's the first thing that we're going to need to do is to um, find the velocity in the y direction. And remember we have a, an equation that relates uh, the y coordinate to x and so if we want to find the velocity, we have to take the derivative of, of that y coordinate with respect to time. And since y is given as a function of x and not as of time, we have to use the chain rule here. So dy over dt is equal to uh, the derivative with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t, which of course is just the velocity of x, uh, excuse me, the velocity of the particle in the x direction. So the first part of that expression, uh, you can see we take the derivative of y with respect to x, the sine becomes a cosine, and the, the constant pi over 12 gets um, uh, moved out, and so that's simplified as the expression shown here. Uh, the second part, dx over dt, well again that is just the uh, speed in the x direction, which is 2 inches per second. So now where we're supposed to find the velocity is at x equals 4 inches, so uh, the derivative at that point, the derivative of y with respect to x, turns out to be 0.3927. We already know that this uh, x dot is 2 inches per second. So multiplying those two together, we get the uh, velocity in the y direction, 0.7854. And so it is positive, so as, as the visualization showed, the uh, particle is moving upward in the y direction at uh, x equals 4 inches. Finding the magnitude, we have the two components. Uh, we square, square them, add them together, take the square root, and so the speed of the of the particle uh, at that point is uh, 2.15 inches per second. To find the direction, simply look at the x and y uh, components, and the uh, angle theta here is going to be the tangent of the y over x components, or 0.3927, and so that corresponds to an angle of a little over 21 degrees. Okay. Now, if we um, consider the fact that, uh, go back for just a moment here, if we look at the tangent of that angle, we'll see that uh, it's the same as the uh, uh, derivative of y with respect to x. And so remember, the derivative of y with respect to x is the slope of the tangent to the curve by definition. And so what we see out of that uh, is uh, that the velocity is tangent to the path. So as the uh, particle travels around the path, the velocity vector is always going to be tangent to that. Alright, now we know that the uh, acceleration in the x direction is zero because we have a constant speed in the x direction. 
let's find the y component of acceleration. So we already know we have this expression for the velocity in the y direction, so we take the derivative of that with respect to time to get the acceleration in that direction. And once again, we have to use the chain rule uh, since we have y dot as a function of x and not as a function of time. And so um, not only have to use the chain rule, we have to use the product rule here as well. So when we uh, take the derivative of pi over 4 times the cosine, uh, we get the cosine becomes the minus sign. Again, we factor out a pi over 12, but we also have to multiply that by dx over dt, which is x dot. But when you take the derivative of that, we still have to multiply it by um, the second part of that expression, which is x dot. Now, the second term, we hold the... Uh, uh, cosine uh, part of it constant and take the derivative of uh, x dot which just becomes x double dot. That second term of course goes to zero because x double dot is equal to zero and so we simplify that and so there is our expression for y double dot. And we plug in uh, x uh, value of four inches and so we see that y double dot is in the negative uh, y direction so as the particle is moving up at this point it is slowing down and so the magnitude is just uh, the component in the y direction since the x component is zero and the direction would be um, downward so let's go back to uh, the SOLIDWORKS simulation and we can also within with the SOLIDWORKS uh, motion we can uh, show this uh, illustration with uh, the velocity and acceleration vectors uh, plotted and I've slowed this down so we can see it a little bit. You can see initially we do have an initial velocity which is given by the green vector here and you can see it is tangent to the path and as we move you'll see the red acceleration vector as well and so it is changing in magnitude but its direction is always going to be straight down and again we know that because x double dot uh, in this case is equal to zero. You do notice that the magnitude of the uh, uh, acceleration velocity is changing a whole lot. Uh, the velocity vector is, is uh, changing as well but not as much because it is dominated by the uh, left to right movement which is the constant uh, two inches per second. So let's go back and um, take those uh, take the acceleration and um, uh, look at it in normal and tangential components. Now we also already saw out that saw earlier that the uh, uh, velocity vector would be tangent to the path and um, we're going to call that um, the of course that tangent direction we're going to define it by the unit vector u sub t and normal to that or perpendicular to that is the normal vector u of n and that points toward the center of curvature so always toward the concave uh, side of the curve and we, we found that angle to be 21.4 degrees earlier as well. Now we can take the acceleration which we know is in the y direction, the negative y direction and find its components in the tangential and normal directions with just the sine and the cosine uh, of that angle it's given. So in tangential, that's the change in speed. So the particle is slowing down at that point because it's, uh, again, it's, it's in the opposite of the direction of the velocity. And the normal component points toward the center of curvature and we know from class that it has a magnitude of the speed squared or the magnitude of velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. Now we're going to check that by calculating the uh, radius of curvature using this expression from calculus. We already uh, uh, have calculated y prime once before and we can calculate y double prime uh, as shown here. Plug in values of x equals 4 inches and we get these two values for y prime and for y double prime. Plug that into our equation Again, the units are, are inches throughout here so we come up with a radius of curvature of a little less than seven inches. Then if we take the speed which we calculated earlier, square that divided by this uh, radius of curvature we just calculated 
and we do match that the uh, normal acceleration is uh, 6.63 inches per second squared. So to summarize here, uh, which set of components or coordinates to use really depends on uh, how the problem statement reads. In this case though we were given the velocity in the x-direction, x dot, and we were also given the path as a function, uh, as y of a function of x. So using rectangular coordinates uh, makes a lot of sense. If instead uh, we still had that path, but if we had been given the speed and acceleration of the particle along the path rather than in the x-direction, then we probably would, would have gone right to using normal and tangential components there. We did con confirm or show that the velocity uh, along a curved path is always tangential to the path and that the acceleration can be divided into the components in the tangential and normal directions and, and they both uh, have some meaning here. The tangential component, uh, the magnitude of that uh, component of acceleration is the rate of change of speed and the normal component is the component of acceleration that causes the particle to follow a curved path. It has a magnitude of the, the speed squared divided by the radius of curvature and it's directed toward the center of curvature of the path.